WGN Sports. A spectacular sunny day for baseball here in Chicago. The side is guaranteed right field, and it's game three of three for the White Sox against the Indians as the Sox try to stave off the sweep today. Thanks for joining us, Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you. Sox have just six hits in this series, but one that came late last night is the most important. There is no doubt that Jacob May is going to remember that night forever. And it came in a pinch hitting role. He wasn't even supposed to play. And yet, took it right back through the middle. Melky got hurt. Jacob had his opportunity and made the most of it. And then the celebration began. He's a very happy man. So is Yomer Sanchez. He's got the baseball. A ball that they will pretty much keep forever somewhere, whether it's a mantelpiece or any place else. Jacob is ecstatic. And unfortunately, in this series, Jason, everything has gone wrong to this point. Well, the good news is the pitching matchup is a rematch of a victory the Sox had about a week and a half ago. It's a veteran left-hander against a veteran right-hander. And in our case, it's Derek Holland going to the mound against Danny Salazar. Salazar threw very well against our ball club in Cleveland. He's got a fastball tops out about 97 miles an hour. He's got a split change, a lot like Carlos Carrasco. Derek Holland on the other side of the equation has been brilliant against the Indians. He's six and one lifetime and he threw the ball very well in Cleveland so this is a good rematch and you see lifetime five and three for Salazar against our Sox six and one for Derek Holland against the Indians ERA is pretty good but Holland's is spectacular so a good matchup today hopefully the offense can come to play because every aspect of the game in this series the Indians have dominated the idea is that the Sox run the bases before the kids run the bases. that would be nice Sunday afternoon Sox and Indians coming up from guaranteed rate field first pitch just around the corner White Sox baseball is brought to you by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers Stop by today or visit buyhyundai.com and see why at Hyundai, better drives us. State Farm, here to help life go right. Meyer, true Chicago fans. Ford, inviting you to visit your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Choose Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, the card to carry through it all. And by Honda. Great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer.
guaranteed rate field with beautiful sunshine overhead. And the Sox have not scored in 23 innings. They've been shut out by the Indians' top two pitchers in this series. And manager Ricky Renteria was talking before the game about what he and his staff can do to help the Sox out of this funk. Confidence is the biggest thing that we're trying to maintain with every player. Yeah, is there a fine balance between allowing them to go out there and, you know, not particularly get the results that they want? <clears throat> Probably what I think that the biggest uh, challenge that we have is to make sure that they focus on their approaches and the things that they're supposed to be doing to give themselves a chance. Are they preparing properly? Are they looking for the right things? Those conversations can only be had if they're out there between the lines and having success or failure. Uh, recognizing and understanding what they do well, uh, talk about it, and then the things that aren't going well, talk about that also. I mean, question is how do you keep up confidence when the numbers just aren't there at this point? Ricky Renteria has got a couple of different issues and one is building a foundation not only with the players but with the attitude going into each and every game. Players don't want to hear about rebuilding because to them they're going out there trying to win, they're trying to get a base hit, they're trying to win a ball game, that's what they do. And so introducing the players to the right way to play whether you win or lose is what they're looking for this year yes it is a rebuilding year however teaching the players how he wants them to go about each and every day is a challenge not only for Ricky Renteria but for the coaching staff and hopefully they are able to accomplish that Sox will try to break out of it today against Danny Salazar and Cleveland the Indians bats will get out there first first pitch coming up Infinity, changing the way you watch sports on TV. This is game number three of the series as Ricky Renteria's White Sox try to pick up their first win in this three games against the Cleveland Indians. The 83 jerseys are back on, and here comes Derek Holland in front of the home crowd after a couple of road starts, including a very good one against Cleveland in Ohio. Hopefully more of the same here this afternoon. It's absolutely a gorgeous day. There's this beautiful round object in the sky that's very shiny that we haven't seen a whole lot of. And not a cloud to be had here on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. It seems warmer when that giant orb is in the sky. Here's the lineup for Cleveland. Carlos Santana leads it off. He had a hit last night in an RBI. And Carnacion in the four spot. Seven homers in 41 games against the Sox, including one last night. Austin Jackson in the sixth spot. Our old friend Perez, his first start at catcher. And Martinez just one for three on a year. Let's take a look at the defense and how Ricky Renteria is going to line him up behind Derek Holland. Jacob May fresh off his first major league hit in left field. Then it's Garcia and Garcia in center and right. Todd Frazier, Tim Anderson, Tyler Saladino had a couple of hits last night along with Jose Abreu in the infield. Omar Nervaez gets a nod behind the plate and Derek Holland on the hill. There you look at the previous starts. He's been awfully good. This is his fourth start. The ERA spectacular at 216, a one and two record. You look at the rest of the numbers, they are very good with the opponent's batting average at 215. 
So we'll take a look at the umpires. Dan Bellino behind the plate. Toby Bastner's at first. Gabe Morales at second. And the crew chief, Jerry Lane, is at third. So they've thrown the ball around the infield, which means we're ready to play baseball on just a gorgeous Sunday as the Sox try to take one of this three game series actually trying to push across a run that would be a good start and so we're ready to play baseball and I'm ready to turn it over to my play by play partner Jason Benetti. Thank you Steve. Today's weather is that type of day that reminds you that summer is indeed coming and that's very nice. Blue sky little bit on the chillier side but you know summer is on the way. It's just a really an ideal day to play baseball. Derek Collins first pitch to Carlos Santana is grounded foul of third and we are underway from guaranteed rate field home game number eight of the year for the White Sox. Two and five here at home five and four on that initial road trip and trying to sneak one from Cleveland after the Sox may have awakened the Indians in that first road series at least to the fact that the Sox could beat him this year two out of three. Rick Renneria said he felt like Cleveland maybe came in here and said look that's not going to happen again. You're not going to take another series from us. Well the bad break was the rain against the twins which rained Kluber into this series. He was supposed to pitch against the twins which would have been just delightful with our ball club instead. On the opening game of the series he was brilliant along with Carrasco so now it's Salazar's turn it's one two three in their rotation and they're awfully good. Derek Holland is fashioning those red socks today those new socks to go along with the 83 jerseys. That is a stellar look. It's a good look. Sartorially resplendent. You ever meet Jack Merriam or Noah Webster? Ah, I, I think I went to school with Noah before he wrote the book. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Do you have five <laughs> words for what type of guy he was? <laughs> on the ground, hot shot. Tim Anderson is on the case, and there goes Santana. Beautifully done by Tim. Anderson made the same type of play last night. And he had some time on a one hop rocket to get it across and actually once he made a very difficult pick on a one hop rocket the rest is fairly easy. One thing that he is been doing a lot of is throwing flat footed which is not the best habit to get into even when you have as strong an arm and he does but he got him by plenty. One down for Tim's counterpart Francisco Lindor. Oh, it takes strike number one. One for eight only in the series for Lindor. That one was a single two nights ago. He does have a sacrifice fly to his name as Holland gets him to swing at a breaking ball down low oh, and two. Derek has been really good against the Indians career wise six and one with an ERA of 235. So he always seems to save his best for the tribe. Last year two and zero oh with a 150 earned run average against these same Indians. Close pitch. This Cleveland lineup is not necessarily built to be the kindest to a left-handed pitcher for Terry Francona with switch hitters galore, two at the top of the order, then Ramirez, Almonte, and Martinez, five, seven, and nine. So all right-handers against Holland today. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I always felt if you had one type of hitter in your lineup you get a release point and you can stay with it. What I disliked was a staggered lineup where you had to keep changing your release point. Bounce to the third Todd Frazier with time for out number two. At the ballpark today it's family Sunday. The White Sox volunteer corps was honored by taking the field alongside the players at their positions. You can learn more about the volunteer corps at whitesoxcharities.org. Home Field Facts brought to you by Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert.com. Sox Serve Week coming up in a few months. That Christine and her group do such a great job with, and some wonderful volunteers honored at the ballpark for their work in the community associated with the White Sox. Geyer takes strike one. Geyer, in the game that he started, hit a two run homer that helped make the difference. At coming against Jose Quintana. 
This is straight up into the sky. Abreu leaning for out number three, Derek Holland. Easy does it in the first. One, two, three as the Sox take aim at Danny Salazar. Runs on Duncan. Tim Anderson back to the top, followed by Saladino. They swap positions. Melky in the three spot, consistent as always. Abreu and Frazier try to heat up. Then Avi Garcia, Leori Garcia, Narvaez, and Jacob May off that first career hit. The defense, another lineup behind Salazar, Geyer, Jackson, Elmonde in the outfield with Ramirez, Lindor, Martinez, and Santana in the infield. Roberto Perez gets an odd behind the plate. Danny Salazar on the hill, a hard throwing right hander. He, like Carlos Carrasco, has a split change. There you look at the numbers 27 strikeouts to go with just eight walks. Tim Anderson, a big rip, and we will see some heat from Salazar today. You got to lay off the face eye fastball from this guy. You have to make him get the ball down. He doesn't have a sinker per se, and that face eye fastball is unhittable. 95 for strike two against the Sox team that's hitting just 205 as a group. That's last in Major League Baseball on base percentage at 265. And Tim Anderson slices this ball to left center field a long way, and it is off the base of the fence for Tim Anderson with a leadoff double. He threw a fastball by him. He threw a fastball that he took, and then at 0-2, he throws what appears to be a changeup. And it didn't do a whole lot as Tim Anderson just missed. Hitting the ball out of the ballpark would have been his second home run. Very promising way to start this one behind Derek Holland, who coasted through his first inning. That's the first extra base hit of the series for the White Sox, who had gone back to back games with three hits or fewer with no extra base hits for the first time since 1991. That was against Cleveland and Kansas City late in the year in 91. Rod Nichols was the starter for Cleveland in the game and then Brett Saberhagen shut him out with Kansas City the game after. Two overwhelming pitching performances by both Kluber and Carrasco. On waivers outside, ball and a strike on Saladino. The last extra base hit for the Sox prior to that Anderson double was Yolmer Sanchez in the finale against the Yankees on Wednesday in the seventh inning. Elzar is actually trying to help him out because he's throwing everything away from Tyler who's trying to go to the right side move along Anderson get him at the very least the third base even if you make an out make it a productive one.
on two and one. This is on the ground through the left side. Base hit, Saladino, Anderson to third. Indians did not expect Saladino to pull the ball, but it's another off speed pitch. This looked like the slider. He was able to get out in front, take it through the left side, and a promising way to start this one. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Just stringing a couple of hits together. It's <laughs> got to be great for the confidence. The last run for the Sox was four days ago, early on against the Yankees, and that 9 1 loss. Well, Terry Francona has his infield. About halfway double play depth they will certainly trade the run if they can get the ground ball. Sox actually would take the trade they just want to run <laughs> at, at this, this point. point. Yeah. Nice play by Perez as he moved to his right. Ricky Renteria who when I talked to him yesterday he said that the knee was getting substantially better. So he'll be able to go to the mound himself instead of either Joe McEwing or Don Cooper making the pitching changes. He was a strong maybe this morning on pitching changes, so we'll see. This will get the job done, you would think. Geyer in left, Anderson tags, Tim comes home, and the Sox have broken through. A sack fly for Melky Cabrera, it's 1 0. RBI number three for Melky. And wisely, Geyer went to second base. There's a lot of guys, if they have a very strong arm, might think about coming home with this, but you allow the base runner first, in this case, Tyler Saladino, in a scoring position, which is something you don't want to do, especially early in the game. So Anderson leads off with a double. Something we saw so much from him last year, the extra base hit potential. He only had two before that at bat. Saladino gets him over with a base hit, then Melky, the sacrifice fly, and that's the anatomy of the run. Nice to see Melky back in the lineup because if you missed last night's game, he was running over toward the line, jammed his wrist against the fence in left field, taken out of the ball game, but healthy enough to play. <laughs> This was last night. This ball was slicing away, made a good effort, and then jammed his wrist. They took x rays, they were negative, and he's back in the lineup. Melky actually went to Ricky Renneria and said, I want to go back in. And Rick said, Nah, it's 6 nothing. There's no reason to chance that in April. So Melky wanted to keep playing after the injury, and he DHs today. Rare DH spot for Melky. As Abreu takes ball number one. You get a chance to see probably about as fast an outfield as the Sox can throw out there with Jacob May, Leary Garcia, Navi Garcia left to right. In the air, right field, and down in front of El Monte, and he overran it. It gets all the way to the warning track of the wall. Here comes Saladino around third. Abreu's in the third. It's 2 0. Sinking line drive, and El Monte realizing he couldn't get to it, then didn't block it with his body, which is something that you have to do in that situation. Single E9. Jose reaches out, takes it to right field. That part of it's good. El Monte played this one off to the side. And it got by him, and then Jose is off to the races. So Dino scores easily. It's two to nothing. The exhale that Jacob May had last night after that first career hit is a team exhale now here in the first inning with just a couple of runs and finally you get a breakout in the outfield. And you got two on the board. Things just change very quickly in this game. So Abreu at third, one out. Frazier with a fly ball can get the run in. Todd Oprah's last 12, the last four games, and embedded in that has been a long bout with the flu. You don't have to play the infield all that close because of the speed of Abreu. 
that's how they determine how close you're going to play if you're trying to cut the run off at the plate by the speed of the base runner at third. Frazier still with a hot shot somewhere could sneak it on through with the Indians having to need a little bit more reaction time playing somewhat in. And there's ball three on Frazier with Avi Garcia on deck. There's a strike three and two on Todd. Sells are 27 years old. Six feet tall, 195 pounds. They did not, at least to this point, sign him to an extended contract. They want to see physically how things work out for him. Frazier wraps it foul, still three and two as Salazar moves up toward 20 pitches here in the first. Even Terry Francona was commenting how thin Todd Frazier looks, and that's a couple of bouts with the flu. Not being able to keep down any nourishment. Now he's back healthy, and hopefully he'll start swinging it. Todd Frazier may very soon do flu vaccine commercials. Salazar came high and in on Frazier, and he fouled it away. After a few sliders away, it's a pretty good pitch. Todd was able to battle him and stay alive. Indians on a five game win streak coming into this game. Sox trying to snap a three game losing streak. That's high in ball four. And runners at the corners with one down as we tell you about our picks to click for today. You can vote online, whitesocks.com slash picks. And try and beat the crew, which is leading three to two to a couple of ones. I've got Frazier. And uh, Saladino looks like the clubhouse leader right now. And the crew has been red hot. So a trip to the mound. That's Mickey Calloway. A couple of very good pitching coaches going head to head in this one, Don Cooper and Mickey Callaway. Trying to settle down Salazar, who has a tendency to just go with one speed of pitch if he gets in trouble. He's still young enough where he's got a lot of life to the fastball as the Sox try to put a little more daylight between themselves and the tribe. The Indians off to a great start on the road, which is somewhat surprising. They were dominant at home last year. 53 and 28, tied for the best home record in the American League with Texas. And this year, just terrific on the road, 8 and 3, only 2 and 4 at Progressive Field. Sox trying to change that for the negative for Cleveland as Abby stands in. We've seen Salazar quite a bit, and there's been a theme with the way Salazar has historically pitched. Avi Garcia, the ball has tended to be away. As you look at the pitch chart, this from the catcher's perspective, see the strike zone, the square in there. Everything basically has been away against Avi in their 18 at bats against each other. That was. Pretty good looking to hit, and he cued it foul, nothing in two. Well, you'd think Perez would go back to that face high fastball. At 96 97, it's got a lot of life to it. Abreu at third, Frazier at first. One out, two in, first inning for the Sox, trying to avoid the sweep. He did, and he got him. Strike three, two down. A lot better pitch to call when you got two strikes and a man at third base. That high fastball, he throws it by him. You don't have to worry about digging the ball out of the dirt, although Perez is very good. In fact, the twosome of Gomes and Perez on the defensive side, they're both outstanding. They both throw it very well, they both block it very well. So they don't lose anything defensively. Jan Gomes last night threw out Tyler Saladino from his knees. Gomes got a very quick, very accurate arm. 
and Perez very similar might even be a touch stronger overall. Well, Salazar has fought his control a little bit but he has been five out of seven first pitch strikes so far in this inning. Ramirez playing in at third. Well, there's a fastball. You said Salazar sometimes will go one speed, and there's a reason he would do that. He's got a very live arm. Especially when he keeps the ball up. I mean, that's up and just barely out of the strike zone for him is an out pitch. Very difficult to lay off of. But you have to if you're going to be effective against him. Ooh, Santana just saved a run. It would be much better for Salazar to wait for Frazier to actually be off the bag before he throws to first. And the athleticism of Carlos Santana saved some big problems. Todd Frazier leads America in drawing throws to first when he's still on or a step away from the bag. Garcia into center field. It's three nothing Sox as they pile on here in the first. He wanted to throw a high fastball. Instead, he got it belt high. And Leary was able to guide it into center field. So the lead extended. Three nothing after back to back shutouts with three hits and no extra base hits. In this first inning, there's an extra base hit. There are four hits. The Sox have outdone their last two games in one inning. By the way, we told you about the last time the Sox were shut out back to back games, three hits and no extra base hits. That was back in 1991. The next game after that, the Sox had just two runs. So they've outdone the 91 team. That's good. Do with that what you will. Yeah, whenever you dive back 26 years, you certainly want to outdo whatever happened at that point, and hopefully it doesn't happen again for another 26. We'll talk about it then. Yeah. Jacob May pining for a chance. Jacob's only 25, so you have to pretty much double his age. <laughs> Three and zero. Oh. There is a strike. Well, Giovanni Soto came out of the shoot at the plate, showing off the power that he ended up with a couple of starts at catcher. So Narvaez is only four for 23 so far this year. Three and two. Well, Omar got the one hit against. Urban Santana. Other than that, Sykes didn't come close to it. Two on now becomes three on. Base is loaded. Jacob May coming up and Ricky Renteria on his young man's first hit. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because after he got his hit and he came in, he says, now we go. <laughs> That's it. That's the first one. That's the jumping off point. The starting line has moved by a couple weeks for Jacob May. You know that there's a whole lot of pressure that is no longer there after getting that first hit, which everybody thinks about each and every day. They tell you they don't. They really do. And now that pressure is worn away and hopefully a base hit here makes things really interesting in the first. 32 pitches deep for Danny Salazar. And he has a strike at the very top of the zone to Jacob May, who 
gave that ball from his first hit to his mom who was in town just got in on Friday got to see her son's first hit and he said I didn't want to mess the ball up so I gave it to mom she's taking it home and she'll take care of it. Similar pitch 0 and 2 even when Salazar is good. He piles up a lot of pitches. Nick Goody is camera shy evidently. Might be ready to go. Two strikes on May. And he goes down swinging Salazar. Pumps high fastballs in, but the Sox tap him for three runs. It's three nothing after one this Sunday. WGNTV.com presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic. Go to JeffVuk.com or follow him on social media because Nationwide is on your side. Sox have scored three runs in the first inning after being shut out in the first two games of this series. Four hits on the board, which is more than they had in each of the first two games. Three total in each of those. As Encarnacion says, please don't shift me anymore. One down. Perfect shift right at Tyler Saladino was playing on the third base side of second and one pitch one out. And after your team scores you three, especially after struggling to score in the entire series, you want to come back, shut down the opposition, turn it over to the offense again because they're going to lead it off at the top with Anderson in the bottom of the second. Just as he did in the first. As Holland pumps in a strike to Jose Ramirez, who was so impressive defensively last night. And here he has the Indians' first base runner with a one out single. Ramirez can do a lot of things, and he can play a number of different positions, just about each and every one of them. But last night, defensively, three different times he dove toward the line, three different times he came up with spectacular plays. And if not turning it around defensively, he was a spark plug. Charging this one, the off balance throw, picked as he dives toward the line. He's got a cannon for an arm. And he just had a magnificent defensive effort at third base. Ramirez is on as Jackson takes ball number one. 
Indians defense has been especially in the outfield has been more impressive this year than it was last year at least early on without Brantley in that outfield things just change for him and Tyler Naquin who did make the ball club out of spring training didn't have the greatest run as a center fielder. Now he's back down in the minor leagues but having Brantley back really makes things uh, completely different plus Lonnie Chisenhall now who played right field last year is playing center field at times so they've shifted him over making things a lot better left to right for the Indians who, who struggled defensively almost the entire season. Holland has run a three ball count to Austin Jackson Derek at six walks 13 strikeouts this year does throw a strike there. Derek Holland this season has been throwing a lot more off speed stuff breaking ball and change up than historically for himself. He's had very good command of just about everything. On the ground Anderson to a knee starts it and to the play. Nicely done by the Sox middle infield and the offense gets it right back. Four three double play. Austin Jackson doesn't run quite like he used to and good pivot at second base as Tyler Saladino takes one step back gets it there an eyelash ahead of Austin Jackson they turn two and out of the inning. State Farm winning combination here to help life go right. So the Sox back to the top of the lineup here in the second inning and nice to see three runs on the board after. Anderson's leadoff double Saladino is single Abreu and Garcia all with hits in the inning as Tim goes for his first multi hit game of 2017 last year that was his specialty and last year he hit the ball very hard to right and right center field this year he started out at least trying to pull just about everything like it was off the plate strike called one and two. So Sunday a lot of baseball going on already. Mookie Betts has homered against the Orioles again at Camden Yards. The, the numbers last year as Tim breaks bad the numbers were insane. He hit eight home runs at the Orioles last year Mookie Betts did eight home runs. It was more than half of what he had in his own ballpark in 81 games. Boston is hoping that they start to hit the ball out of the ballpark. They've had monumental troubles 
Trying to duplicate what happened last year with them. I know Big Poppy is not around, but Andrew Benintende should be there all year, but they're just not hitting home runs. Nice pitch by Salazar. Coax the swing and strike three, so one down here in the second. 2017 Chicago White Sox presented by Guaranteed Rate. When buying a home, the best mortgage experience on the planet starts at rate.com. The sky looks like a lagoon today, and that is very nice. Not a cloud to be had. Seems like the clouds are big Sox fans. Considering the home weather we've seen so far in 2017. They wear Sox colors, right? Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't been. Hasn't been particularly good weather, but making up for it today. With Kansas City coming to town to wrap up this abbreviated six game homestand, Kansas City has really been struggling. They're having a hard time scoring runs. Seven and ten right now, last place in the AL Central to start the year. Lorenzo Kane is swinging it, and a whole lot of other guys in that ball club are. Off to very difficult starts. Opening play today, the Royals and Sox are the two teams with the fewest runs scored in Major League Baseball. Saladino makes it back to back strikeouts for Salazar. But Tyler will always be listed in the phone book ahead of Salazar, just by a hair. Here's Melky. And he's hitting 500 against them today. So four strikeouts for Salazar, who has seen the pitches pile up. Number 46 on the way, which usually leads to a fairly shortened performance. You're going to get a bunch of your outs via the strikeout as well. It's not going to help matters in terms of getting later into a ball game after a lengthy first. That is a nice slider. Yeah, good, good, tight, hard breaking slider low and in. So he's bounced back this inning after his troubles with location in the first inning. Things looking a whole lot better here. And that'll do it. Melky goes down swinging slider fastball combination, does the trick. One, two, three by way of the strikeout, but the Sox still lead by three. First pitch of inning number three is a breaking ball from Derek Holland to Abraham Almonte. Sox lead three to nothing on a four hit first inning. Hey. 
There's a strike to Almonte, who was 0 for 3 in last night's game. He did score a run in a two run fifth. The Indians got two runs in three separate innings last night. And Almonte was not close to doing much with that pitch. One and two. Indians have dominated right hand starters at seven and three only three and four when a left hander starts against them. You lose Chisholm Hall in the order maybe Brantley Kipnis is a left hander as well. Santana much more productive from the left side. I mean he can hit from the right side but power wise. Yeah most most of his damage is done as a left hand hitter. Inside of the journeyman outfielder Abraham Almonte, who's only seen Holland twice in his career. Derek Holland, mostly with the Texas Rangers in his major league career, with the blip on the Sox radar so far this year. Holland gets him out in front strike three first strikeout for Holland. Nice off speed breaking ball and he had El Monte well out in front of it. And even though it is a touch off speed it breaks sharply down and in and El Monte with no contact. So one out for Perez. It was just three out of 20 this year. You know, we told you Holland has been using more of the off speed stuff this season than in his last year with Texas. Slider change up 40 plus percent starting play today, 24 percent last year. Really all depends on the feeling that you have. Sometimes that feeling comes to you early in a ball game and you rely on it. Sometimes. You're warming up you can't get the feeling and your catcher has got to ease you into that pitch sometimes replaced by another pitch other times just if not disregarded certainly set aside for a given performance. It's really up to a catcher especially if you have a veteran catcher to figure out just exactly what you have on a given day because sometimes that fastball might be going as fast just not moving as much you don't have as much life to it and the catcher will be the guy who knows first. Not you the catcher knows before you do. Yeah we do. They really do you you feel you're throwing as hard sometimes not getting there as fast and your catcher is the guy that knows that plus same thing with movement. He can tell when it's moving late or when it just. Has the velocity just doesn't have that that little darting toward the end of it. You guys who remember it bats in intricate detail and have mental files on players aren't the first one to know when your pitches aren't doing what they normally do. No mo most times you're not. Most time if the hit, if the hitter doesn't tell you by hitting a line drive or hitting the ball at the ballpark the catcher will come out to you and mention a couple of different things like we've got to go to something else for a while. Maybe it'll come back to you a little later in the game. A couple close ones off the inside corner it's a one on walk. Sox fans celebrate your Italian roots with Italian Heritage Night presented by Beggar's Pizza when the Sox take on the San Diego Padres Friday May 12th. Italian Heritage Night features specially priced tickets and a post game fireworks show to purchase tickets visit whitesox.com slash Italy. I'm not sure if your parents are Italian but are they coming to that game that night. My parents are typically at the ballpark I feel like they've <laughs> they've gotten rid of all of their other hobbies. Which is not certainly a ratings help. But they were they were White Sox fans long before you were even on the planet. That's true. And especially my mom. My dad had to convert. To, to from, a Sox fan. From? From the other one. Oh, the other one. Yeah. Uh, bad news bear fan. <laughs> Martinez may need some new shoes after that swing. He uh, was trying to air it out, only to find at the end no contact and not much balance torque is an interesting thing one and two on Martinez 
former rule five draft pick came up with the Nationals was well liked in their minor league system because of his flexibility. Yeah he can play anywhere and give you a pretty good performance. Even seated. That strike three Holland was searching for that location against Perez and he finds it against Martinez. Shaves off the inside part of the plate gets a call from Dan Bellino. Perfect pitch. Well, perfect is relative but <laughs> certainly good enough to get the call as Omar just eased it over a touch. That was, that was a nice catch by Omar Narvaez. Yeah, did a nice job. Try not to move the glove a whole lot when you're trying to buy a strike and he was able to buy that one. So here's Carlos Santana. Yeah, and he takes strike number one Derek Holland two strikeouts in the inning he's given up only one hit so far. Leary Garcia is way back there just to the left of center field. As the outfield deep all the way around. 65 degrees at the ballpark a little warmer today so consequently the ball should fly a bit better than it has been flying. Off the inside corner one and one that's a dramatic pull shift both on the infield and outfield against Santana. And it's a rarity to be a dead pull hitter from both sides of the plate. You don't see that all that often, but that's the case with Santana. Why don't you see it that often? Because you have two different strokes. I mean, you would think because you're the same hitter that you would swing the bat the same way from both sides. It just doesn't work that way. So some guys who are dead pull hitters from their natural side, which is the right side in the case of Santana, might be an off field hitter when they turn to hit from the left side. This is a pull side ground ball and Todd Frazier retires the side. One walk no harm done still three nothing Sox behind Holland. Right now, our 300th texture will win a $30 gift card to a Subway restaurant in the Chicagoland area. So don't miss out on the Subway triple play promotion. Where's the person sitting that's tabulating all the texts? Nope, number 55. Nope, number 56. Sitting at your local Subway establishment. There's one at every Subway? Every one. A counter, yes. And they just get real time updates, is how that works? Yes. When they get closer to 300 or 30 or anything with a three in it. Abreu finds.
Hands some grass. That one stayed up for quite some time and apparently not read particularly well off the bat. So Geyer couldn't get there. Jackson couldn't get there. This ball hit off the end of the bat. And finds a very comfortable place to land. The way Jose tossed his bat aside, it was as if he was very frustrated, and suddenly his fortunes turned. Yeah, he realized he didn't catch it on the good part, but dropped in a perfect spot. The Statcast folks have a stat now called barreling. Yes. If you hit a ball in a certain spot on the bat and with a certain velocity, you get a barrel for that. He's not going to get a barrel, but he'll get a hit. No barrel. One strike on Frazier and Danny Salazar, who gave up four hits and three runs in the first inning. Frazier in the air to left field. And one away. Today's plate umpire, Dan Bellino, is actually he's a local guy he's from the Chicago area. And it's been a tough week for Dan and one of his friends uh, and family, one of his longtime friends who was a big Sox fan, Johnny Minnelli, passed away this week of cancer. Dan had passed along word and uh, wanted to wish the best to the family. They were evidently childhood friends. And uh, Johnny was a big White Sox fan, actually got married at Lutheran General Hospital wearing a Canerco jersey, Johnny did. And uh, Ron Kittle showed up to the ceremony. Here's a ground ball to third. Ramirez starts it, and there is the turn. So five to four to three on the double play, and the inning comes to an end. Three nothing Sox with the lead after three. Here at the ballpark, and uh, here's what you can win playing Sox. Oh, something's yeah, missing. I had a, a, a tragic occurrence before the game. I actually turned around and knocked over our familiar, friendly, famous gnome. Oh. He's gone, at least for the moment. Now, we might have a contest to see who can put him back together again, but right there, that's where he was pretty much not in pieces. Yeah, there's a there's a spot there. As he became later on. So you can't have the gnome if you win today. Well you can. He's just some he's assembly a broken required. Gnome. <laughs> yeah, very sad. Sad day for the gnome. Don't know if he felt anything. <laughs> Gotta say. Two strikes on Lindor. 
We have weekend socks math for you this half inning. You can play along and win something off the prize shelf, including that Hawk Harrelson alarm clock, the piggy bank that Steve hasn't broken yet, and the uh, scorecard that somebody sent us in the mail. And a Jermaine Dye bobblehead. Always Jermaine to the conversation. He, he was here yesterday. MVP of the World Series in 2005, Jermaine Dye. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. What a likable dude Jermaine Dye is. Wherever he went, and he played with a few different teams, very much beloved by his teammates, and just a good player. Lindor cracks it to left field. May is back at the wall, and Lindor has departed. That's his fifth. He's now driven in 12. And the Indians trail by a pair. That's a breaking ball that doesn't do a whole lot, stays away, and Lindor was able to get out in front. We told you the ball will travel a bit more today with the temperatures up about 10 12 degrees over the last couple of nights. It's on a two strike pitch as well one and two was the count when Lindor went deep. So he now has his fourth career hit in 10 tries against Holland. One of the best marks in the Cleveland order against the Sox lefty. And two and oh on Geyer. It'll be really interesting to watch the progression of Francisco Lindor as a shortstop because he's going to get better and it's frighteningly good right now. How much power do you think is in there? 25. Possibly 30 as he starts to fill out. He's still a very young man. And the ability to always have that breaking ball coming into him as a switch hitter does really gives him a big advantage. Right hand side Garcia on the move and Avi's there to make the catch for out number one. Here's your weekend Sox math question. Hashtag Sox math first correct answer on Twitter wins a prize off the prize shelf. The position on the White Sox all time home run list occupied by Carlos Lee subtract the position on the White Sox all time home run list occupied by Carlton Fisk. So where they stand all time in White Sox home runs positional. Right Sox was your winner yesterday. He won himself a Jermaine Dye bobblehead. We have two. Sounds good. Well we have Two until you break one. Nobody's taken the Sox Rubik Cube or our kids' club piggy bank. I like that. I, I may nice. take that and bring it home. You can't. Why? It's not included in the rules. You, have your you, can, you can have the gnome. Thank you. We'll always have a piece <laughs> of him. It's true. In fact, a number of pieces of him. Who's going to guard the shelf is the question. Somebody absconded with our guard dog. Now the gnome is shattered. Yeah, it's been a, a, a tough start to this season <laughs> for the shelf. <laughs> two and two on Encarnacion. And now the count runs full. One walk, two strikeouts so far for Derek Holland, who still holds a two run lead, 56 pitches deep. Ohio native Derek Holland. Yeah. That is strike three. Brilliantly done to get rid of Encarnacion. Two out. He just got out guessed because this one had the whole plate. So I'm not sure exactly what he's looking for, but he takes a fastball. It's, if not down the middle, it's certainly on the inner third. That's just a question of a guy that will occasionally look for pitches, getting one that he wasn't looking for. There's Ramirez as Holland has nicely worked the inner third against the right handed hitters of Cleveland today. And you're going to have to do that. You're a left hander. You're going to have to throw inside to the right hand hitters. 
there's a few pitchers historically who've been able to get away with it. Tom Glavin comes to mind who pretty much stayed away from most of the right handers but for the most part you better establish inside so you can go away with your other stuff. One and two on Ramirez. Sox fans and school teachers weather day presented by WGN TV is on April 26th when the White Sox take on the Kansas City Royals 1 10 p.m. Prior to the game join WGN TV's chief meteorologist Tom Skilling for a fun presentation including weather videos trivia and more visit WhiteSox.com slash WGN for more information. That whole batting helmet full of nachos. You get to determine whether you want extra guacamole or not. That was a very substantial plate of nachos. I almost didn't get through the weather day discussion because I was preoccupied by the nachos. Frazier to first. And that'll do it. Indians get a leadoff home run. Holland takes care of them from there. 3 1 your score. Orthopedic injury report, and we're happy to tell you that our gnome is back in one piece. This is compliments of the queen of community relations, Christine O'Reilly, who heard us talking about our injured gnome and brought up yet another one. I thought that was the last gnome in existence, proving there is no place like gnome. Here he is. So, injury report brought to you by Dr. Anthony Romeo, proud member of Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Go to RomeoOrthopedics.com or call 312-432-2342. I am ecstatic with a gnome in one piece. I thought that was the same gnome and Dr. Romeo put him back together a la Humpty Dumpty. No. I'm, I'm told by John <laughs> Walgren I do not want to take credit for that. Yes, you that do. That would you make should. him Dr. Nomeo. Our producer oh boy and punster. Oh boy. <laughs> Wherefore art thou? Nomeo Orthopedics. Very nice. Thank you, Christine O'Reilly. That was very kind of you. Rarely do churros get overshadowed, but they did. You've got a, a pair of them. Yeah, the, the gnome was delivered the same half inning as a churro. And if there's anything that says Sox Park, because there's strike three, Garcia goes down. Guaranteed rate field now. It's a churro. I, you've had them, right? I have. They're the best. Yeah. I think the food here, from stand to stand, 
is just wonderfully delicious. We've seen some amazing things in the booth. There are the churros. And here's and, mine. And there is, yes, uh, unwrapped. Would look a lot better. It's delicious, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. It's good. It's a great thing about TV is if I'm eating a churro, you can just watch the pictures. Except for when there's a hit, Narvaez is a single. He is one for one. And to go with that walk, and I'm just guessing here, but it looks to me like if you can wait that long on a change up or slow slider, you should get the pick to click for sure. Oh, and Omar dumps it into right field. On base percentage, outstanding. That's a nacho demolition. That's a lot of nachos. There's ball number one to Jacob May. I, I still one of my favorite moments so far this season very early in the season but his scream after his hit last night into the helmet just he said after the game on that first major league hit that he felt like there was a, a Harambe sized weight pulled off of his shoulders. High in the air left side Lindor is out after it and he plays hopscotch on the tarp. Wind helped take that one out of play. Even though it appears that it's blowing in toward the Indians dugout actually comes in swirls and took that ball a lot further out of play than normally would have been. We had a windless night last night that has not turned over into the daytime on this lovely Sunday there. There is something by the way about a Sunday at the ballpark. I spent a lot of Sundays at this park. You spent a lot of Sundays at ballparks. It is uh, the family atmosphere on a Sunday afternoon is is a wonderful thing. And what's really nice as you look around it's it's a really good crowd. Last night an excellent crowd just over thirty two thousand looks like more of the same here today. That's how this game is perpetuated by parents taking their sons and daughters on beautiful days to the ballpark. When you're very young obviously you're more interested in the concessions than you are in just about anything else but it starts your love for the game which in my case in the case of a lot of us who have spent our lives in the game it's carried on for quite some time. It's been that way for Jacob May too. You know, he's got his grandfather Lee and his, his great uncle Carlos. And you get introduced to the game at a very young age. Now, if you can play it, that's one thing. But even if you can't play it, coming to the ballpark should be a wonderful experience. It was for me. I still remember the first time I was there, and I think everybody does remember. It, not the first game, certainly early in your lives, for the first time seeing the sea of green when you come out is startling. Jacob May runs the count to three and two. We see so much heritage passed down in baseball with second third generation baseball players and it never fails. One of the things guys will say is just by being exposed to it at an early age being around the clubhouse being around the players being a bat boy here and there. It changes the way you look at the game and, and changes how much you care about it. I remember when I first got to the major leagues there was this very young but very small man at the time he was a boy running around the locker room just interacting with players and doing a lots of things that kids do if they have the opportunity to ever do that and that little fellow became very bond. <laughs> Willie Mays was his godfather and he hung around our locker room a lot. High fastball does in Jacob May seven strikeouts for Danny Salazar who has settled down well after a rocky first inning. Here is your Sox map answer for today. 
Carlos Lee is ninth on the all time Sox home run list. Carlton Fisk is fourth. So the answer is five in Chicago. 92. Is your winner? I didn't think it was pronounced like that. <laughs> How would you pronounce it, Steve? Will you do it in your sandwich voice? <laughs> I, I, can't pos <laughs> I can't do that again. I think I, I think I strained an oblique. The last sandwich imitation that I tried to do. Somebody tweeted at me during that <laughs> game and said, tell Steve to do a French dip next. <laughs> That'd be really good, too. Tim doubled, started that long first inning for the Sox offense. We'd like to thank Stephanie Schmidt for tweeting us. She says that she bet the gnome had it coming. Wow, <laughs> the gnome is a good, solid citizen, as far as gnomes go. Stephanie, was, thank you, Stephanie. She was evidently in Chicago with the uh, he had it coming all along. Stephanie, if you'd have been there and you'd have seen it, I bet you you would have done the same. Then we have Matt C saying, "Rest in peace, Sox gnome." Beautiful Twitter yeah. eulogy. Nice. That's up high, two and two on Tim Anderson. 75th pitch on the way. We're in the bottom of the fourth. One thing about Salazar, he'll start the ball game throwing 96, 97, and regardless of how many pitches he throws, when he is done with his performance, he'll still be throwing the same velocity. Check swing, ball outside, and he didn't go, says Toby Basker over at first. So now three and two on Tim, who does have a walk this year looking for his second one. Tyler Saladino in the on-deck circle if Tim can keep it alive. Narvaez at first, three and two. That's ball four. Anderson takes a walk. Two on, two out for Saladino. Sox fans, join us as the White Sox take out the San Diego Padres Friday, May 13th, 6 10 p.m. First 20,000 fans get a Hawk Harrelson alarm clock presented by Total Lubricants. Visit WhiteSox.com to purchase your tickets today. That is a beautiful thing, that Hawk Harrelson alarm clock. And it has a lot of different functions. Besides just getting you up in the morning. Is that right? Yeah. In fact, one day on the shelf, and that one was picked by whoever happened to win on that given day. So a very hot item and something that will be given away in the not too distant future. First 20,000 fans. Get here early, yep. get your alarm clock. Day against San Diego. It's during the next homestand. You're on the road for a long time after this six gamer. Taking a look at the schedule. At the third week of June, the ball club will be at the point where they will have played 28 games at home and 44 on the road. That's how that's how road heavy the early part of the year is. Tyler trying to break this game open as that foul ball makes it one and two. The Capra's got to be careful down there because you're taking a look out at second. You want to make sure that the base runner is safe, that nobody's going to sneak in behind him. But you also want to make sure you don't get a line drive in the right ear. There's been a little bit of a crackdown this year about coaches being in that third base coaching box and in that area. At least that's the way the season has started. Yeah, you can be in the area is good. That is strike three. Saladino goes down. Salazar has struck out the side twice. Sox still lead 3-1.
football coach at Tennessee and Nikki talks about how his experience as a young guy shaped his baseball career. You know growing up I feel like maybe being a bat boy in the College World Series because um, that was my dream for as a bat boy was to win it um, as a bat boy. Um, other than that high school was state championship and then also getting able to play with Team USA. Um, but so far I feel like this this moment right here being in Big League Camp it's um, tremendous honor and um, it's great to be all around these guys. That was a conversation with Nicky down at spring training before the camp broke. He was one of the last guys cut from the major league club and he's hitting the ball very well down in Triple A Charlie. It was very impressive this spring. I mean I think he opened some eyes as far as his abilities are concerned. It was really nice to hear him talk about the honor of playing for Team USA and just being at a major league camp. I think sometimes guys who have that opportunity tend to take it for granted. And knowing that there's nothing in life that's promised you when you have that opportunity you have to make the most of it and although you try to enjoy each and every minute the pressures sometimes limit the enjoyment somewhat but you have to keep it in perspective it never comes around again so have a good time with it while you can that ball is crushed by Austin Jackson down the left field side and one hop to the fence rolling side spin into the corner and Austin Jackson will take his two and stop there. Watson gets out in front of this one, takes it down the line, and it rattles around for a bit before Jacob May can get to it. So the third Cleveland Indians hit puts Jackson in scoring position to lead off the inning. So here comes Almonte. I, I, the game, the game just beats you up. Nicky Delmonico had some struggles in the minor leagues, lost a portion of his season. Austin Jackson had the meniscus issue. I, you find somebody who's not hit adversity in the game of baseball, and that person uh, has either been very, very lucky or doesn't exist. And for me, the toughest thing to try to look at and evaluate is when a player is not able to do anything because his body is not allowing him to. You see guys with great skills that never come to fruition because their body doesn't allow them the daily grind of staying together and being able to play this game. It's tough enough to play it when you're healthy. It's almost impossible to play it if you're consistently nicked up. I, uh, I saw Mark Pryor try to come back in triple A yep. for a couple of years worth and you remember the electric stuff that he had on the other side of town and then you watch and you think man what if you know what if he hadn't gotten hurt there's there's a great line that I read in a book one day I'll share with you and that was a guy reminiscing on his career wondering if he would play for an independent team when his major league career was over and he said he realized at that point that you spend a great deal of your life gripping a baseball and in reality it was the other way around all the time that the game does have a grip on you and it's tough to leave. You kind of had the end of your career decided right. Yeah I mean I, I promised myself that I would play as long as it was fun and I would hope that I would have the good sense to leave before they asked me and one you have control over and the other you don't. But yeah an injury ended my career as it ends so many others. Ground ball is foul wide at first. And that was a break because that scores a run puts Almonte into scoring position but for about three four inches down the line. We'll take another look from this angle. It is foul. Remember if Cleveland even if Cleveland wanted to challenge that they could not because the fair foul call was in front of the umpire on the bases. So that is not a reviewable play. It was clearly foul but not able to be reviewed if they so chose to try two on on that walk. And for the first time Derek Holland has run into a couple of base runners at the same time for Cleveland. Now the question is if you're Terry Francona and you've got your catcher who doesn't play a whole lot in a situation where you can butt your way into a couple of guys in scoring position. Now I know Todd Frazier giving signs to the infield how that works is 
Todd is going to get signs from the dugout as to what type of defense they want to use. Then he's not going to leave it to chance with the pitcher, in this case Derek Holland. He will tell him if he wants him to charge toward the line or straight ahead, depending on whether Todd is going to stay back or come in to field the bunt. Martinez is next. He is not a regular player for this team, typically a bench guy. And it looks as though they're going to let Perez swing away. He doesn't have a sacrifice bunt this year. Terry Francona is a manager that doesn't like the sacrifice bunt too often. They've been successful four times this year. Club down the left field line and hooking foul. Couple of well hit baseballs the last two innings for Cleveland. Perez has power. We saw that in the World Series. And now a meeting at the mound. Perhaps changing the signs. Tyler Saladino certainly wants to know. Ricky Renteria, who was a middle infielder and a former number one draft pick. But Ricky had some skills. Drafted the same year as Terry Francona. A couple picks apart. Check swing. He may have gone. No. Throw to third is late. Looked like he did go, but in either event, that ball got away, and then some heads up base running. So both runners move up. We'll watch it again. Now, whether that's ruled a wild pitch or a pass ball, it should have been handled and was not. So the Indians suddenly have the tying run at second base. And Holland dispatches Perez. Strike three called. Derek's getting a lot of mileage over that fastball on the inside part of the plate. Big strikeout. Caught him looking. Nice job by Omar of easing the ball back into the zone. Now the infield is going to stay back. So Martinez with Jackson at third can round one of the middle infield likely get a run for Cleveland. As Holland pumps in strike one. After 22 pitches only in the first two innings for Derek Holland. This is going to be number 80 coming in the fifth. Oh and two on Martinez. You don't normally go after strikeouts, but here's a golden opportunity to take down Martinez and try to get out of the inning with Santana. Oh, and two. How would you throw it differently if you are going to quote unquote go for the strikeout against Martinez? You're going to throw it out of the strike zone to try to get him out instead of trying, let's say, for the outer third, which will probably yield a ground ball to the right side. Let's see what Omar decides. Swing and a miss, strike three. Martinez is out. He did bury one and he got him. And there it is. You go to the slider down, confidence your catcher is going to be able to block anything. And so Don Cooper is going to come to the mound now to have a little discussion on. Exactly what they want to do with Santana with Lindor in the on deck circle. So there's a good biting slider down and in. Nice block by Narvaez. And so with runners at second and third, two strikeouts have gotten Derek Holland now one out away from getting out of it with that lead intact.
Dan Bellino comes out to break it up. Not a question of killing any time for the bullpen. This is an instructional trip to the mound to figure out what they're thinking about with Santana, who's grounded out twice. Both of those to the left side of the infield. One to shortstop, one to third. So Santana, one for seven in the series with four walks, as he's prone to do. Holland trying to keep the lead against the dangerous Carlos Santana. 31 year old switch hitter playing first base today. And just about the time you think maybe a pitch around would be in order then you look to the on deck circle and you see one of the real talented young players in the game. Francisco Lindor who did Homer last inning. Well there have been two pitches out of the zone to Santana at least according to Bellino the plate umpire. That is a strike and he missed his spot it looked like. Want to throw that ball away and. It drifted toward the middle of the plate. Santana might have thought that this was a pitch around because he took a fastball right down the middle. Jackson at third Almonte at second. That's a called strike. Big pitch dropped a slow hook over the outside corner. Two down two and two. Holland to Santana. Tying run at second base. Holland. And the dirt three and two. You saw before the pitch was on the way Omar Nervias was pointing to the dirt. Telling Derek Holland bury it I'll block it. He did get it there and Santana did not go out and try to get it. With Lindor looming Holland sizes up Santana. Three balls two strikes. Two on two out Sox have led throughout. Ball four. Now you've got to deal with Lindor, who homered on a one two pitch in the fourth. I think that was pretty much the conversation Don Cooper had with Derek Collin was you can pitch to him, just make sure that. It's out of the zone. If he does hit the ball, make sure that he's hitting something either off the ground or eye high. And he wound up walking it. Lindor takes a called strike. Good slow breaking ball. He drops over. Hitters just don't want to hit. A first pitch breaking ball if they can help it. They're hoping that the pitcher misses and eventually comes back with a fastball. There's the fastball that shoves Lindor out of the batter's box. One ball, one strike. Bases full of Indians. For a young man who hit 300 in both of his seasons coming into this year. 12 homers his first season 15 last year and now he's down a ball and two strikes already five homers in April and you said maybe 25 30 on the top side he is on pace for something like that I think he's going to hit every bit of that if not this year certainly the next couple of years. Ball and two strikes. 
Holland gets him swinging. Derek Holland out of the straight jacket. And the Sox maintain the lead. It's 3 1 into the home fifth. Powered by Xfinity, and it's the use of the inside part of the plate from Derek Holland. Fastball shaving off the inside corner before going to a good hard slider. He gets Lindor swinging over the top of a pitch that's inside and out of the inning. Giga time high speed replay, the future of awesome. We said at the top the Indians have nine batters going right handed against Derek Holland who has really put together a master class of how to use the inside corner today against those right handed hitters. You have to be able to do that and then what happens is when you start throwing it in there consistently you get an inch or so. Melky scoops that one out and flies it to center field. One down. Come out to the park tomorrow through Wednesday as your White Sox take on the Kansas City Royals. All fans in attendance get a 2017 wall calendar featuring Frank Thomas, Mark Burley, Paul Canerco, World Series as well. Purchase your tickets today, WhiteSox.com or call 866-SOX-GAME. Some neat history on that calendar. So I, the I got Hitman logo. I got mine the other day, and it's a good-looking calendar. Plus, it'll allow you not only to know the history of the Sox at various times but also who's coming up and you can figure out which home stands you would like to come and enjoy. Well Abreu is no worse for the wear on that pitch. But he's not terribly pleased either. Doesn't appear to be all that happy. We'll take another look as he throws that ball behind him. Not exactly John Cruck, Randy Johnson. Oh boy. Now that could be a warning. We'll now, have to see what Dan Bellino has in mind. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Well, if he's not going to warn him, the conversation then becomes a moot point in that he threw one behind him, hit him with the second one. Here's a reaction after the one behind his back. Sorry, my fault. And then here's the one that hits him. Either he sold it very well or he actually just didn't know where the ball was going twice in a row. 
could happen. I haven't seen a pitcher yet say, oh, yeah, of course I threw at him. That one nearly came into the booth. A little bit below us, though, but don't worry, I have the hands of a sturgeon, so you are well protected, my friend. I've been hit once, so I'm bailing. I don't. That's it? You've only been hit one time? Yeah. In the booth? Triple A, yeah. Oh. That one's fouled back just to the right of us. Hey, Todd, settle down. Hit it between the lines and let it land fair as Boone Logan starts loosing in the pen. Salazar is about ready to deliver pitch number 89. Actually, after a very lengthy first inning, he's minimized the pitches since. And Frazier goes down. On strikes, Salazar with strikeout number nine. This is a very typical line for Salazar. That is the split change, which is a good one. He had him well out in front of it, but we talked before the game that he's going to get around the fifth inning, and he's going to be very close to triple digits in pitches because he does strike out a whole lot of hitters. He'll walk his share, and today he's given up few base hits to go with it. In fact, six of them to be exact. Five singles, one double for the Sox so far today as Avi takes strike one. Avi Garcia 0 for his last 10, the last four games. Average still hanging above 360. That ball's well hit, deep center field. Jackson back at the wall, and it just barely hit the fence. Abreu around third, throw to the plate is high. He's safe. Avi into third, it's 4-1. Not sure exactly how that one stayed in, but it didn't stay in by much. Turned out to be a nice play by Jackson in center field, getting the ball back in, but Jose hustling, able to beat the play at the plate. And for Avi, a bomb to straightaway center field. This was one of those split changes. He waits back, almost taking it out of the park. That one hits high off the wall, and Austin Jackson doesn't get trapped too close to the wall. Martinez with the relay throw. The throw is high. And Jose in under the tag. Felt like the momentum was starting to cheat toward Cleveland in this game, and the Sox grab a run at a big time here in the fifth. Trying to grab one more as Leury Garcia swings and misses. That ball, by the way, came off Avi Garcia's bat at 108 miles an hour and went 407 feet. He routinely is in the top 10 as far as exit velocity. That ball was just hammered. Take a look at Leary Garcia and what he's doing. If you're in the on deck circle, you've got to act as another base running coach. He's motioning to make that slide. He's motioning to make it away from, in this case, Perez. And that's what you have to do. That's your responsibility as a guy in the on-deck circle if there's a play at the plate. You act like another coach. Leary did it very well that time. And you're taught as a base runner to try to pick up that guy in the on-deck circle when he's trying to help you. That is a great point. It's the only thing that Abreu has in his sight that could possibly help him. Yeah, and as a guy in the on deck circle, you only have the one responsibility. And he did it well. Avi Garcia at third, Leuri Garcia at the plate, Willie Garcia in Triple A. 
high in the air. Foul ground, third base side, and Ramirez squeezes out number three. Sox get a run. Avi doubles in Jose, and it's 4-1 after five. True Chicago fans. And it's Geyer to lead it off here in the sixth. A true Indian fan. Except for when he was playing for Tampa Bay. The Tampa Bay's. Geyer, who's always been very good against left handers and not as much against right handers, gets Holland one more time. And the bullpen starts to work. As the pitches are starting to pile up, pitch number 95 on the way. Brandon Geyer, who last year in spring training, he and his wife Lindsay had their second child, who they named Camden, because Brandon Geyer made his major league debut at Camden Yards and homered in his first at bat. Nice way to commemorate it. It was indeed. There's a few other places that you probably wouldn't want to name your son after, but Camden's a good one. A little Tropicana Geyer. It's three and two. <laughs> I know somebody's tweeting right now, guaranteed rate Geyer. Yeah, that wouldn't, that doesn't have quite the ring to it. Well, you got the middle name already figured out in that case. Fly ball to right field, and Avi Garcia for out number one here in the sixth. Oh, good, something else to read instead of that conversation. Sure, go get them. Sox group outing is the perfect way to entertain clients, promote teamwork, or boost morale. Companies, schools, churches, and sports teams. Enjoy special group benefits when they reserve 20 or more seats. The larger your group, the larger your discount. To purchase, visit whitesocks.com slash group. Inside corner for Derek Holland has been very effective today. In fact, so much so that now he's getting a couple inches inside, and Encarnacion was not particularly happy with that call by Dan Bellino, but he's been giving him that inside part of the plate all afternoon. And that got a piece of him, so he will head to first base. 
Barely clipped him, but did. And one out, one on for Ramirez. Trying to stay inside, and it was a relatively soft breaking ball, and so Encarnacion, who knows his job is to get on base, didn't exactly didn't exactly run away from that pitch. He let it hit him. And he's aboard. I had a college game a couple weeks ago down in Knoxville, Tennessee, and the plate umpire actually did not give the batter first base after he was hit by a pitch. He said that he made an affirmative act to get hit by the pitch. He just barely turned his arm into it. That's something that's going around college baseball at least. But there's a ground ball to third. Frazier's on it. Saladino turns it. Two. Inning over. Five to four to three. Bottom six coming your way after this. On in the Sox minor leagues last night in our White Sox farm report, Nicky Delmonico continues his hit streak. Keon Barnum, couple of home runs in Canapolis, a 10 to 9 winner. Antonio Rodriguez, four hits. But the big hit last night was Keon Barnum in Birmingham. Swing, fly ball, center field deep. Back goes Galloway to the fence, looking up, and it's Gonzo, grand slam. Gonzo. Kurt Bloom on the call, the longtime Birmingham radio announcer. And how about Keon Barnum with a couple of homers? Two runs shot and a grand slam for the Barons. Six runs driven in. A good night. And good night to Danny Salazar, who has been kicked out of the game by the Sox offense. And Boone Logan comes into this on for the ninth time. ERA a little under two and a half. There you look at the rest of the numbers with. Opponents hitting 313, which is a very high number considering the ERA is down. He is high and in to Omar Narvaez, who reached twice against Danny Salazar on a walk and a single to right. Boone Logan, who's been a very serviceable left hander for quite some time, former White Sox Pensman. He was brought in to take some pressure off Andrew Miller so that Terry Francona doesn't have to use him quite as much as he would like to. And with the philosophy you can never have too many quality left handers in your pen. They added Logan. He started Narvaez with a steady diet of fastballs after last year the southpaw Logan. Threw more sliders than he did fastballs. And as a situational left hander which he's been you're going to do that a lot. He's got a good hard slider. When you can come in out of the pen to get one guy, you're not going to throw too many curveballs to him, especially when, in the case of Boone Logan, his slider to left handers is at times fairly unhittable. 
think Omar should expect one here. I don't think. He gets one and it's low three and two. He's Steve Stone. I'm Jason Benetti. Our entire crew on a beautiful day. If not a windy one here in Chicago. Thanks for joining us and making us a part of your Sunday afternoon wherever you might be. Fouled away by Omar. Salazar went five gave up the four runs on seven hits. He walked three fan nine and pitches as they so often do. Piled up on it. So Nick Goody for the second time in this game starts to get loose. As always featuring two shoes as there is ball four. Oh wow. <laughs> MLB.TV <laughs> premium is back and better than ever. Watch every out of market regular season game live. Plus, get a free subscription to AdBad Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Great thing about MLB.TV is if somebody you're watching makes a bad pun, you can just turn on another game, right? You have access to all the games at any time and the occasional pun. Which sometimes you should hold in abeyance. But neither of us have become aware of that <laughs> no, fact. We haven't found the abeyance yet. It's a strike to Jacob May with the bunt shown. Anderson next, Saladino to follow. So the idea behind a bunt would be to move the runner into scoring position. Although, again, the bunt has seen better days in terms of volume in Major League Baseball. That would also bring Goody into the ball game. Two right handers at the top, Anderson and Saladino. Jacob pulls back, one ball, one strike. I mean, essentially, as a manager, you're playing the numbers here, right? You don't want to give away an out. However, you also have Jacob May, who's one out of 30 so far from the plate. But you're always looking for add on runs, especially against a team that can score like the Indians can. They've got a very good offense, although held in check by Derek Holland. There's the butt by May. Santana charges, calls for it, and underhand. Safe! Safe! Martinez couldn't hang on to it. That's a very easy play that when you lose your concentration, this game will just jump up and bite you. So it goes sack E4. It's a very easy play. Martinez just drops it. And that's going to bring Terry Francona out. So Goody will come in the ball game. Boone Logan will depart. And as he comes strolling in, we'll step out. Be back after these messages.
game with a couple of men on and nobody out. There you look the numbers on for the third time. He was a closer at LSU the year that he spent there. And he's going to deal with the top of the order. With the Sox looking for a chance to, if not put this one away, then certainly get a little more daylight between themselves and the tribe. Young lady and young gentleman enjoying the concession stand, certainly. Sox trying to do some damage here. Anders in against Goody, who was traded from the Yankees to the Indians in December for a player to be named later or a cash at the time. There's ball number one. Anderson shortened up. Got to be very careful if you are the lead base runner in a situation like this because if a bunt is called, you're looking for the bunt. If whoever is bunting bunts through it, it's a very easy play to get picked off, especially when you have the arm of Perez. Because he can get it there in a hurry. Narvaez, the catcher, is the lead runner. And Anderson takes ball two. Wonder if this is a ruse or an actual bunt. At this point, I'd like to see him swing away. He's going to get a 2 0 pitch. He's probably going to get a fastball. Especially if Goody thinks it's a bunt, he's going to want to throw a high fastball. 2 0. Oh. That's called a strike. 2 and 1. We got the high fastball. And that was testing the upper reaches of the zone. High fastball. Call the strike by Dan Bellino. Thirty seventh career major league game for Goody against Tim Anderson in, in his second season. And he takes a strike two and two. I don't know that Tim was ever going to bunt. Maybe if he got a first ball fastball that was buntable, he might have, but the first two pitches out of the zone, and the third one likely out of the zone, but called, you never really know. Two and two, and he got him swinging. Threw the fastball right by him. Tim most unhappy with himself as he pounds the bat. So one out, Saladino the batter. Tyler off a two-hit game yesterday. He had two of the three Sox hits. Strikeouts today as well for Saladino, who has the longest strikeout streak of his career right now, nine consecutive games, and the closest one after that is not near nine. Rare to see Tyler go on a run of games with strikeouts. Pretty good contact hitter normally. One and one. Goody went to high school in Orlando, which has yielded over the years some really good baseball players from that area. They have good high school and very good amateur programs. Well short of the plate, two and one you mentioned. He was drafted out of LSU. He bounced around a little bit. Florida College. The State College of Florida as well. So he was in school in Jacksonville and then Bradenton and then ended up in Baton Rouge. High school of 4.2 GPA, which was very similar to mine if you added up all four years. 4.2 is pretty good. Yeah, that you'll take. Narvaez at second, May at first, and Saladino. And strike two. 
It was a slider that stayed up high, not where Goody wanted it, but it turned out to be effective. Melky's next. Then Abreu, who's been on three times today. Two and two. He got him. Nice fastball, lower part of the zone, strike three. This is a no doubter. It had the whole plate, and we're earlier in the count. You might have said, well, he might have missed with that. That one had the whole plate. That was a good pitch. Some run on that two seamer yep. from Goody, and here's Melky. Who drove in Tim Anderson for the Sox first run in a couple of days in the first inning. Really like to grab one or two here just to create some cushion against a dangerous lineup. The Indians get out of this one after first and second nobody out and they come away without giving up a run. Had a little momentum going into next inning. On the ground, through by Melky. Narvaez around third. Here he comes, and Omar is safe. Another drop baseball in the inning, and the Sox get a run to Melky's applause. It's 5 1. Omar's going to be out from here to Gary, Indiana, if Perez just holds on to the baseball, but he can't. So a couple of misplays by an Indian team that's normally very dependable in holding the baseball. Not so this inning. Geyer makes a good throw. And Perez just drops it. Well, they learned in Baltimore to always be nervous when Omar is coming. And Narvaez scores to make it 5 1 and 2 on in scoring position. For Jose Abreu. It was a base hit run batted in. Second of the day for Melky, his fourth of the year. Melky will take it. The Sox will take it. Just about everyone at the ballpark will take it. And now. A couple of strikes on Abreu. So this inning really pivoted on the drop ball by Martinez covering first on the throw from Santana against Jacob May's sacrifice bunt. Then a couple of strikeouts. Goody looked like he was going to get off the edge of the cliff and Melky pushed him on over. It's 5-1. Well you saw from Nick Capra probably the essence of what this team is going to be this year. And that's one that's going to hustle and put the pressure on the defense. Now, even though it was a good throw by Geyer, putting the pressure on the defense, many times they're just not able to execute. We saw that right there. So Nick decides to send them and turns into a big add on run. Why not a couple more? Just off the end of the bat, find a nice place to land in the outfield. Ball took a nice Cleveland bounce. Looked like it was going to get by and then was interrupted on its way by by either hitting off Perez or Bellino. One and two. In the air, first base side, Santana. But the Sox do get a run. Melky Cabrera, a two out RBI single, and it's 5 1 after six.
Korea by visiting WGNTV.com and click on the game zone for the latest stats and information. Dodd Camera, family owned and serving Chicagoland for over 125 years. Dodd Camera, where the focus is on you. And we got a new pitcher coming in the ball game. It is Nate Jones with a four run lead in relief of Derek Holland, who was very good this afternoon. Strong day for Derek. Six innings, three hits, one run it was earned. He walked three, he struck out six, and here are the numbers on Nate. On for the eighth time, you look at some pretty good numbers. Early in the season, he had some problems with command. They seem to have been worked out. Big year for Nate Jones, his alma mater, the Northern Kentucky Norse made the NCAA basketball tournament for the first time. Pretty exciting. Nate said he was torn though because Northern Kentucky played the University of Kentucky and he's a big Kentucky fan too so there were some uh, split allegiances. You can't go with the school you went to. Oh this is in the same state. Check swing no go. The appeal no. Nope. So you'd take Kent State over just about any other college in Ohio. Oh, certainly. Especially with the programs that they have. There's a look at Dan Otero, who just started to loosen up. In the air, right side and down. Austin Jackson fights off a two strike pitch to single to lead off the seventh. Hey Sox fans, you win with Papa John's Pizza all season long. The day after the Sox win, you get 50% off your entire online order of regular menu priced items only at PapaJohns.com when you use promo code SOXWIN. Valid at participating Papa John's locations. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Wind is starting to pick up. Thank you for that Foley artistry. In front of your microphone. Here's El Monte. One strike. The Indians have one of those relentless offenses. We said they picked up multiple runs in three separate innings last night. And the extra run is a nice separator for the Sox, at least at this point. Five to one. For a Sox bullpen that has been just lights out to start 2017. And the bullpen continues to work. Dan Jennings and Tommy Kainley. So Jennings has been used quite a bit. And as the lone left hander, you would expect him to pile up the appearances. That's high, one ball and two strikes on the Sox bullpen. The ERA of the relief core is 172 starting today. That is. Second best in Major League Baseball. 315 total ERA as the day started. That was the best in the majors. Last night, Michael and Noah stretched out because of circumstances. Zach Putnam left the ball game with some arm difficulties. And Inoa went three innings, which is unusual for him. He doesn't usually go that long, and it turned into a couple of runs on three hits. Putnam was charged with a run after it scored when he had departed. So the bullpen picked up a few runs last night. That's strike three. He nailed the corner and one down. Went to the fastball, put it in a good spot, and he rings him up. Perez will hit for himself here. Terry Francona does have a pretty loaded lefty bench today with Kipnis, Brantley, and Chisenhall all sitting there just in case for later. And more times than not, they've got the off day tomorrow. So if you do keep them out of the ball game, gives them a couple days off, chance to regroup. Although it is early in the year. One of the Arts of managing is making sure that everybody is healthy and rested 
as we move through the championship season. It's not as though these guys have numbers on their backs that say, okay, he can only play six more games in the next ten, and he's going to get hurt. Uh, it's all a guess. But some some days you don't say, okay, we're going to lose this game, but you say I, it's not worth it. Well, especially for for Kipnis, who is just back off the disabled list. He played two games in a row. This is day after a night game, so don't necessarily want to use him. Could have been a strike. Wasn't two and one. It was a pretty good pitch, and I think Omar is talking with Dan Bellino about it. Looked like it had the lower portion of the plate as our pitch cast. Sponsored by Xfinity, we'll show you. In the air, right side, and arching toward the seats. Two balls, two strikes on Perez. Tomorrow the Sox will welcome in Kansas City. It's a 7 10 first pitch from Miguel Gonzalez. He will face Jason Vargas whose ERA is teeny tiny at point four four to start the year. The Royals playing Texas. Facing Hugh Darvish today and on the top of the fourth they have a two to one lead over those Rangers. It's a big pitch coming up. Three and two, one down. Austin Jackson at first, and the Indians starting to threaten here in the seventh. Ground ball would be peachy right here. Nope, it's a foul ball back toward us and into the booth off our monitor. That caught my television screen. It did. And Jordan next to you did a great job of protecting you. Yeah. I, this is the monitor that it just hit. This is our makeshift windscreen. Jordan was trying to defend me very nicely. Thanks, buddy. Did a good did a good job. That is high into the sky left hand side and Jacob May. Out number two. We've got peppered up here today. Got a couple that have been very close. Fortunately, closer to you than me. And you've got Jordan to help you. I mean, he did a very nice job the last time. Good job, good effort. <laughs> two down <laughs> for Michael Martinez. Sox got three runs in the first this afternoon. And there is ball number one from Nate. After a couple of shutouts back to back, I mean, not only shutouts, but shutouts where nobody really hit the baseball. A three run first, a welcome sight this afternoon. And the first hit of this game for the Sox was an extra base hit. And that was that was a positive sign as well. As those are not streaming out in this series. Again, the Sox face the top two pitchers the Indians have to offer, Corey Kluber, Carlos Carrasco. First two games of this series. It's a ball high as well. So Nate has missed up three times on Martinez. And you've got the very dangerous Carlos Santana ready to swing the bat at least for the moment swing the bat from the left side. But Jennings is loosened up. It's ball four Martinez gets lost on four pitches. And so two on two out and another pivotal batter here in Carlos Santana. And here comes Don Cooper. So the question is here do you want Santana from the left side 
which is more destructive side, or do you want him from the right side, which would necessitate Dan Jennings coming in once again would be his third game in a row. Here is Dan J Jennings just uh, waiting to see whether or not he's coming in. Tommy Canley as well. They both await their fate and the answer looks like it's going to be Nate Jones. Santana as you've talked about against lefties has less power historically has gotten on base at a better clip against lefties but has more power against right handers and it will be Santana going from the left hand side with two on two out in the seventh inning. One of the things to consider would be that Jennings would be used for the fourth straight game because he did pick up some work in the finale at Yankee Stadium as well as the first two in this series. Santana went swinging at a 1 0 pitch and he popped it up. Frazier on the move. Frazier coming in and he can't make the play. Well, you have to hope that that one does not come back to bite the boys because you're giving them yet another out. And the Indians are dangerous as Todd takes a look up. He's yelling and it just drifts away and apparently the sun not a problem because the glasses were not flipped. Here's what the wind is doing to the flags and now one and two on Santana. Nate would rather that foul ball be a footnote and nothing more. Todd Frazier likewise. So one hard slider low and in the way from getting out of this inning. Omar said put it low he didn't and Santana shanks it foul. Now he wanted that one low and in and unfortunately that ball just drifted on the outer portion of the plate. Well, Nate missed consistently with fastballs to Martinez into that four pitch walk. Now, one and two on Santana. Where do you go? Go back to what he was trying to do last time. Slider down and in. Way outside. We've seen that more in the early going this year than we saw most of last year. That's the ball on the slider, especially, just slipping out of Nate's grip, and that ball just drifted away. He's trying to bury it down and in, but this ball just flies out of his hand. Nice play by Narvaez, making sure the runners stay at first and second. Two and two. He tipped it into the glove. Strike three. Santana, farewell. Two left on. Nate Jones gets out of trouble. And still 5-1.
White Sox debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash White Sox to learn more. Wintrust Community Bank member FDIC. Sox are up five to one. Nate Jones scurried out of trouble in the top of the seventh, stranding two Cleveland base runners, a new pitcher for Cleveland. Dan Otero comes in the ball game on for the eighth time. His ERA a touch above five and a half. And his job to hold them right there. Otero will face Frazier, Garcia, and Garcia. And Omar Narvaez, in case anyone were to reach, and there were no double play, Omar has reached three times today. Frazier once with an eight pitch walk in the first inning. Otero fires in strike number one. Indians bullpen was holding up will work for food signs after the first two games of this series complete game shut out for Kluber then one inning from Zach McAllister last night. Now one of the things that the Indians probably are thinking about is back to back games with Carrasco and Salazar because they're so similar their stuff is almost identical to one another fastball. 96 97 miles an hour a slider to go with it and a split change which is something you don't see but when you're seeing it for the second time you're more likely to have success and it was Carrasco in last night's game with Salazar pitching today and maybe it's because of the rain out but we'll see if it stays with them pitching back to back. Frazier serves it up the middle left of second base hit on two strikes to greet Otero. That to your point, let alone the fact that the Indians don't have a lefty to mix it up in the starting rotation. Right, but similar, I mean, similar pitches, they're, they do have different, I mean, Tomlin's a completely different pitcher, and so if you can do that, and sometimes you can't because of the rain, that's what happened, that's why it was Kluber, Carrasco, and Salazar in this series. Normally, you wouldn't have three guys with fairly similar stuff. Of course, the way Kluber and the way Carrasco threw, nobody's going to hit him anyway. I mean you've talked before about you you end up with three straight games from a left handed pitcher or something like that those platoon guys are getting start after start and they're settling in to where they feel comfortable and the Indians don't really have the ability to flip somebody around considering they're right handed heavy in the starting rotation. Well, same thing for a few years with the Sox and the left handed starters was you're getting that right handed platoon player who might get. 35 to 40 percent of the play he's getting three games in a row to get his stroke groove by the third game he's in pretty good shape. Our fourth drive of the game came off the bat of Avi Garcia and almost left the ballpark this is that split change he reaches down takes it high off the wall and the relay throw home is high Jose slides under it and Avi with a double and a run batted in. Dan Otero by the way has now given up two hits in five at bats this year when he's had an 0 2 count there goes Frazier and Frazier is out. He this wants, may be worth the challenge. Yeah, he wants to take a look at it because that throw was not a good one. And Todd thought he had. Gotten to the bag before the tag. We'll take another look. The throw is not good. And he's absolutely in at second base. So the call by Gabe Morales, who might have gotten screened, but as he reaches back, and he, being Martinez, reaches back, he hasn't tagged him yet, and that foot's been on the bag for some time. So this should be a very easy call. Todd said, I am safe, with maybe another word interjected. Absolutely. Uh, something like that. Okay. 
Truly? Todd. Truly safe? Yeah. Respectfully yours, Todd Frazier. Yeah, he's there. This will be a fruitful challenge. This has been one of those games from the Indians' side that they just as soon forget defensively because they haven't handled the ball well. They haven't thrown it well. He is indeed safe at second. It will most likely go as a stolen base. So, Indians don't have games like this often, or they wouldn't have done last year and this year what they're doing. But this has been a very sloppy defensive game for the tribe. On that replay, by the way, that's the reason that umpires should like instant replay. Gabe Morales gets screened on the play. He wants to get it right. And eventually, without too much delay, it is right. That instant replay total running time ends up being maybe five or six trips around the batter's box off a foul ball by a batter in a game. Yeah. And which has more value, the answer is very clearly getting the call right. And I think this year they are speeding up the replay. Last year at times it used to drag on for a bit. That's called strike three on Garcia. And so one down with Frazier at second. That ball maybe just off the corner, too close to take. And Otero, who last year had just an enchanted year for the Indians, he was five and one. He appeared in 62 games with an ERA of 153. He was a very valuable member of that bullpen. He faces Leury Garcia, who hits it to the right side and moves Frazier to third with two down. And here's Omar with three times on base to his name today. I think for sure that's the pick to click. I mean, here you're talking about a perfect on base percentage. Make an argument. Yeah. And a good solid one. Good argument always propped up by the guy putting it forth, <laughs> calling it a good argument. Omar swings and misses. You know what? Looking at the box score though, he scored once. He's come home on a play that required a really good slide and him breathing down the neck of the catcher and forcing him to drop the ball. I would, I would pick Omar today. No, I don't think I there's would. any doubt about it. And I don't have a vested interest one way or the other. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Two strikes. Frazier at second, two out. Nearly clipped him. Frazier at third, I should say. Stole second, got to third on the ground ball. Activity in both bullpens. Looks like Tommy Canely. And Sox pin. That's called strike three. Narvaez goes down looking and Frazier stranded at third. Still 5-1. The Sox with the lead at the end of seven.
game all Sox today. They batted around in that first inning three runs on four hits Derek Holland threw it very well in six innings only three hits and an earned run he stands to be the pitcher of record. Great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer our Honda game summary. And we got a new pitcher coming in the ball game and that new pitcher is Tommy Canely on for the seventh time. He's had a good run out of the bullpen getting everything over the plate. He's only walked one while fanning 12 and five and two thirds. A radical departure from last year. The straight change has been very good. And all things considered. It's a good turnaround year for Tommy Canley. Big spot here to keep Cleveland. Where they are. And Lindor. Takes ball number one. Ball to strike as the shadows start to creep in here at Guaranteed Rate Field. Not too bad to this point, but it will get that way. A little bit low, two and one. Sox trying to figure out Cleveland in this series. Cleveland won the first two. Sox just 264 and 341 against the division since 09. And Lindor starts it off well for Cleveland here in the eighth. If you're looking to this point for one defining moment as that throw goes in back of Lindor, who scampers back to the bag, but that defining moment came in the fifth inning with the bases loaded when Lindor struck out. Instead of doing what he did there, a Mazda replay taking it back to center field. So that was a pitch around of Santana, you might remember, and then a soft breaking ball to fan Lindor getting out of the fifth inning, which turned out to be one, if not the most defining moment of this game. Well, Santana, he, as you said, he, walk, he walks on. Six pitches. He ran it to three and two. Takes the walk. Lindor, who had homered the time before, strikes out, and then suddenly the Indians are done with that threat in what was a game of just a couple of runs at that point. Dark for a strike from Tommy Canely to the right-hander Brandon Geyer. Sox trying to get back one game within 500. On the ground second base should only be one and that is the case Saladino on to first Lindor to second with one out and Sox only need to get five outs now as Saladino takes the low risk play. Yeah he took a look at second base and realized that you could go that way but if you don't make the play you open yourself up to a big inning take the out when it's afforded you and that's what Tyler did. We have a sticks and stone question for you. We will quiz you on your own career. Okay. Against the Cleveland Indians. As Encarnacion comes up. Guy who homered last night in the first inning and gave Cleveland all it would need. In a 7 0 eventual result. Strike one. Here's a question for you Which of these players had the highest on base percentage against you? Andre Thornton, Von Hayes, Pat Kelly. I was a teammate of Pat Kelly's two different times. So I couldn't have, couldn't have had that big an on base percentage as a teammate. I'll say Andre Thornton. I do remember an inside the park home run he hit in a three home run first inning that included Dwayne Kuyper's home run. Oh, really? O'Reilly. No, that's O'Reilly, yes. Interesting. So your choice is Andre Thornton? Sure. You got a 33% chance. Sure do. Should let you take a 50 50. <laughs> take him out? Well, you cut and off. go for Pat Kelly and, and Von Hayes? Cut off an incorrect answer and a half. Old five for one? 
That was an incorrect answer. Okay. Well, I'll well go I know with, I didn't say I'll no. go with Von Hayes then. Or I didn't Pat Kelly. That. I was just saying that we should give you an opportunity to shave down <laughs> the incorrect answers. Lindor at second, one out. And that is just off the plate from Kainley. Two balls and two strikes for Encarnacion. Ramirez next. Lindor at second. Two and two. Strike three. Canely gets rid of Encarnacion. It's a rocket of a fastball. It's down. And it's been called a strike most of this afternoon, and a strike it is. So two down for Ramirez. Lindor is still at second. Four outs to get for the Sox. There's ball one. Here's your sticks and stone answer for today. Your guess was whatever, Andre Thornton. Whatever is right. Now Von Hayes. A thousand. Yeah, he you didn't get him out. Oh no. What a tragedy. He's pretty good against you. Yeah, Andre Thornton was just uh 308. Pat Kelly 417. Oh. Your thoughts on Von Hayes now that you guessed incorrectly? Well he, he was once traded. Five players for him. Five players coming from Philadelphia to the Indians. And Von Hayes going to Philadelphia. So he must have been good. <laughs> you got the Herschel Walker treatment. <laughs> Just another in the long line of left handers that couldn't get out. Why wouldn't you if you know that walk him? Yeah. Well maybe you did. Fouled away. One and two. Uh, Ramirez. Lindor is still at second. Leadoff single. He was moved over on a ground ball by Geyer, and then Canely struck out Encarnacion. And the good news is we've seen Tommy Canely pretty much around the plate this entire inning. This entire season, he's been around the plate with everything. So a completely different pitcher than through it last year. Still one and two. Sox in the bottom of the eighth will have the nine one and two hitters May Anderson and Saladino as they try and cinch up a win for Derek Holland. Certainly well deserved at six innings with just one run against a very solid lineup. Give up a grand total of three hits. One and two from Canley. Strike three. Tommy Canley fans two and keeps it at five to one.
schedule. It's Kansas City coming to town starting tomorrow night and then the off day on Thursday before a road trip that starts in Detroit for in Kansas City and ends in Baltimore. See your authorized Dodge dealer to experience a world of performance design and fuel efficiency. Go to Dodge.com and check out our powerful lineup. And Brian Shaw comes in the ball game, checking out the Sox powerful lineup. Three runs in the first. And one in the fifth and one in the sixth for the Sox today. It's Jacob May swings and misses. And Shaw comes in for this game. He's thrown seven and a third so far. On for the ninth time. 1 0 is ERA a little higher than he normally experiences, but it's early yet, and he is the fifth Indian pitcher today. Last two outings, he's been better against Minnesota. He didn't allow a run in an inning and a third. Detroit got to him pretty good. Two innings in that series, five hits, three earned runs against the Tigers. Year after year, he's good for in the mid 70s in appearances. I mean, this is one of the most durable relievers around. And if you like to work often as a reliever, Terry Francona is the man to play for because he goes to that bullpen quite a bit. Two and two on May. Everything staying low against Jacob May, but Shaw, hey, look, the numbers in terms of games. League leader in 14 and last year, 80 games in 14, 75 last year, as you said, 74 in 2015, and 70 in 2013. Four straight years, 70 or more appearances. Yeah, pretty amazing. I mean, he's been the picture of durability. He will take the big baseball anytime you offer it to him. Came over from the Diamondbacks in a trade that featured a whole lot of players. Including our old buddy Matt Albers. Yeah, that was a three team affair. Trevor Bauer also involved. Now three and two on May. Tim Anderson who's been on twice so far today with a double and a walk. Three and two. Outside ball four. A very confident take by Jacob May for a leadoff base on balls. If something will be on here. At five to one down, as far as the Indians are concerned, five to one up for our Sox. I don't think you're going to put anything on. You give him the green light to run if he sees something. I would think he would have the green light most all the time. Ball one from Shaw to Anderson, and the manager will tell you when you do have it. With the only sign being don't run. Now Lindor coming over to have a word with Shaw who's struggling with his control. Tim fouls it away, two and one. Beautiful sunny day here at the ballpark. I don't think we've seen a cloud all day. Now it's been gorgeous, and a lot of people showed up at the park today to enjoy this one. They certainly have liked it so far.
Anderson rips it to left, and there's the first two-hit game this year for Tim Anderson. On base three times today. Sean got that fastball up. Everything that he threw to Tim was up. That will bring Perez out from behind the plate. That's as close as we can get to a cloud. Don't know when I'll be back again. When would that be? When you arrive on a jet plane? Steve, I hate to go. <laughs> but I'm going to after <laughs> after that. Two on, nobody out. Strike one from Shaw. Santana expecting a bunt, which was not forthcoming, at least for the moment. Melky is next to Brayu to follow. Nobody out. Four run lead. Up again. Man, Shaw having all kinds of problems with his control this afternoon. He walked May, Anderson singled. It's ball two to Saladino. He was two and one on Anderson, now two and one on Tyler. Last thing Terry Francona wants to have to do is go to that bullpen for another pitcher. There's a strike. Indians will have the off day tomorrow and then entertain Houston, who's playing good, solid baseball. The Astros 13 and 6 as they beat Tampa Bay today, a final in 10 innings. Tip foul by Saladino. Astros came into the day with a couple game lead on Oakland, which has played very well to start the year. A's are trailing big today, 6 to nothing at home against the Mariners. Seattle having a tough start to this season. They came in at 7 and 12. They expected to get out of the shoot a little more quickly. Strike three to Saladino, who has fanned four times today. Strikeout number 14 for Indians pitchers this afternoon. Salazar had nine of them to three walks. Two for Goody, two for Otero. And one for Shaw as Melky comes up. Derek Holland today got the Sox in position to pick up the win. Six innings, one run. He walked three, struck out six, the only run on a Lindor solo homer. Derek Holland is he had the one bumpy start in New York other than that he's been pretty good for the Sox today he had great command on the inside part of the plate he was given the calls by Dan Bellino he stayed there and kept on threading the needle inside we talked about it the injury trouble for Holland has been the real issue over the course of his last couple of years with Shoulder inflammation last year, a strain of his shoulder in 15, and then knee surgery as well the last 
three years. Back in 2014, as Melky goes down swinging, and Cleveland has racked up 15 strikeouts. That was actually the only question with Derek Holland, and it was not a very expensive gamble in the grand scheme of things, but Sox knew that if he could stay healthy, he could win. And so far, he's been healthy, thrown it very well, and neutralizing a good, strong Indian offense here this afternoon. Five hits on the board only for Cleveland. As Abreu tries to add to the lead and takes strike number one. Shaw has reacted well to the first two reaching in this eighth inning. It's been one of the difficult things to do if you're facing Brian Shaw. That fastball looks like a cutter and has good movement. Right side, and it gets through. Another mishandle on the Cleveland infield. And it's 6 1 Sox. That one caromed away a long way. It goes E3. This is a defensive effort that the tribe would just as soon forget. This is right to him, and well, he looks at the glove, realizing that he probably should use that instead of his shoe. They don't make shoes with pockets, <laughs> no. typically. That is error number three against the Indians today. And a few certainly could have been charged that weren't. Yeah, when Narvaez scored in the sixth inning, just a drop by Perez, the yep. catcher, allowing Omar to come home. So here is Todd Frazier for strike number one. After two games when the Indians did really nothing to even have the door creak open at their hand, uh, two games when Cleveland had so much skill on the mound to have the Sox get a couple of breaks with misplays from Cleveland is at least somewhat comforting in the Sox dugout. Well, this Indian team normally very sure handed. It's not so today. Todd checks his swing and doesn't go. Ten hits today for the Sox after six combined in the first two games in this series. All six of those were singles. Lindor at shortstop. The scoop to Martinez and the Sox add a run thanks to a hit a walk and an error. Three outs to get in a five run lead.
a good defense is certainly aided by not allowing any contact. So a couple of strikeouts from Nate Jones and Tommy Canley came on for an inning. Fan two gave up a hit but no runs. When you think of garages, think Danley 773 garages. But we get a new pitcher coming in the ball game. It is David Robertson on for the seventh time. And he's given up nothing. Four for four and save opportunities. Just trying to pick up an inning to stay sharp. Not a save chance here, but certainly important to keep the Indians down. As Lonnie Chisenhall pinch hits for Austin Jackson to lead off the ninth. To left field, Jacob May on the run, and Chisenhall plops it in. Fair ball. Lonnie Chisenhall with a leadoff double. Doesn't hit it hard, but drops it in a perfect spot. So coming on in a non-save situation, it's very, very easy for relievers without that surge of adrenaline that they get to come on in and give up a run or so. El Monte charges it up to center field. Leury Garcia camps. Chisholm Hall on his way to third, and he is there. Nice job of backing up by David Robertson. That ball, as it was rolling in, hit the bag and then bounded over the head of Todd Frazier. But David Robertson back there to make the catch, which is where you're supposed to be. So Perez pinch hit four as well. Told you about all the lefties on the bench for Terry Francona. Jason Kipnis is on. Perez finishes 0 for 2 with a walk and a strikeout. Kipnis takes ball one. Just off the DL with shoulder trouble. Jason Kipnis has Chisholm Hall at third. Close pitch. Now two and one from Robertson. And you're just talking about how closer can come in, give up a run. It's okay if he gives up one run. He's not gonna like it for his ERA, but the team will take it. As long as it's only one. Well, there's no doubt, and that's the reason why so many closers have an ERA that's not quite what you'd like it to be because of situations like this. If you haven't thrown in a while, and no need for a closer when you're not scoring any runs in a ball game, as Sox did for the first two, you have to you have to come in and get an inning, and you have to stay sharp. Because if need be against Kansas City, they're coming to town starting tomorrow night. Want to make sure your closers get a good feel for the strike zone. Three and two on Kipnis. See what the Royals bring over, considering their seven and ten record at the start of play today. Sox have struggled with Kansas City over the last couple of years. Six straight season series. Have gone to Kansas City as Kipnis takes ball four, and the Indians have two runners on in this ninth inning. It's going to be Jan Gomes pinch hitting for Martinez. They will save Brantley for another day, it looks like. Martinez finishes 0 for 2 with a walk and two strikeouts. So Gomes, who caught the first two games of this series and had a hit in each, will face Robertson. Yeah. 
David looking for a ground ball up the bat of Jan Gomes. Ball one. It's usually a nice medley when David has a very easy ninth inning. You get Sweet Home Alabama when he comes out of the bullpen. You get Sweet Home Chicago as everyone goes home. But the medley has been interrupted by Cleveland with a double and a walk so far in the ninth. You just see it so often in non safe situations for your closer. Early in this season, David Robertson throwing the ball probably as well as he's ever thrown it. But it's tough to duplicate that feeling for a closer of a save situation when you're not in one. It's disconcerting too when you come in and then you create one for yourself. <laughs> not the right type of adrenaline is that as a jam shot pop up. That should be out number two and is Abreu for the second out. Buried that one in on his hands and Gomes could do absolutely nothing with it. Carlos Santana the last gasp for Cleveland in this series the Sox lost the first two in shutout fashion today jumped out to an early lead with a three run first inning on four hits and Robertson trying to cinch it up without number 27. Kipnis takes second base no more force out there. And that is indifference, no stolen base for Kipnis. Tying run is still a ways away. That would be Geyer in the three position. Lindor on deck, then Geyer. There's a strike on Santana, one and one. Sox won't see Cleveland again until June 9th through the 11th in Ohio. There's a bullet for strike two. Jake and Elwood can start to warm up. Two strikes, two out. Robertson buries it and it gets away. Chisholm Hall scores. The Indians do get a run here in the ninth. It is six to two. This will go as a wild pitch. Curveball down. It flattens out under Omar's glove. We have a brief interlude as a fan is on the field and he will be spending the remainder of his day somewhere other than at a baseball game and rightfully so. So Robertson and Narvaez will talk it over. I would suggest a hobby. <laughs> Juggling jacks. Parcheesi rather than running on the field. In fact, everything else is advisable. Or a forklift to get him off. It'll be two and two when we resume play. Sox lead at six to two. Cleveland has a runner at third. It's a two and two count on Santana. And we now have the field cleared for baseball once again.
Two balls, two strikes, two out. Kipnis at third. Robertson. Pretty, Ball three. Yeah, pretty good pitch, and David certainly wanted it, did not get it. Three and two. Strike three. Game over. Sox win six to two. Good way to end this one on a cold third as David Robertson comes on. Gets the final out. Perfect pitch. Santana who had a long day 0 for 4 with the walk goes down on strikes and We'll be back.